Do you, do you remember any early on conversations where um, you kind of ended people's like stigma, I guess, uh, that they had against you for being blind? You know, just like I have faced on the internet, a lot of people at the time that I was going blind, like kind of just assumed I was faking it. Mm -hmm. And you can't get a guide dog from a school like the Mira Foundation without proving you're blind, right? Like they don't go around giving $40,000 dogs out to just anybody. Um, you have to have medical notes, doctor's reports, eye reports, um, pull, fill out forms. Like it's a full application process. And then you have to actually go and demonstrate your orientation and mobility skills with your white cane so they can assess you and that a dog would be right for you. And so you don't just get a guide dog, you know? Um, so I feel like just the fact that I got a guide dog from an accredited school like the Mira Foundation in a way like helped prove the validity of my vision loss for people like in my, in my community. Wow, so it was like a validity type thing and that's why they would discriminate. Like, oh, she's not actually blind. Just like they do yeah, online. Yeah, because, because it's like, oh, you know, oh, well, in grade seven, Molly could see that. So why can't she see that now? You know, like it was just people, people really struggle. Like people really think of blindness as black or white. Like you either see or you don't see. You either see everything or you're in the dark. People really struggle with the, the idea that blindness, like all disability, is a spectrum. Um, in fact, people who can see absolutely nothing are the minority in the blind community. Most blind people have some kind of remaining vision, and there's a lot of people living with degenerative vision loss, like myself, where it slowly gets worse over time. So it was really hard for, for young people especially to wrap their heads around that, but you'd be shocked. Like I even had my school guidance counselor say that I was faking it and like told my other teachers I was faking it, told my parents she thought I was faking it. And she actually had to like get on a call with my psychologist who like had my eye reports and was like, N so she's not faking it. And it's really damaging to her mental health that you keep telling people she's faking it. Yeah, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. And what is like, I, I struggle to find out what's in it for the person who is accusing someone of faking it. What, what would like, what would it do for them if, you know, someone was, if they they turn out to be fake, like I don't I don't I don't get it. I just yeah. I really I struggle I to understand. And like you said, like no no one no one is out there faking faking it. A, a very a very well, small faking minority. Faking blind, like in particular, faking blind is is very difficult. Yeah, I would you say know, it's there's, like there's things to fake other disabilities or illnesses that would be easier. So, for example, like a wheelchair user, right? Like you can get a wheelchair and and sit in the chair and and more easily kind of pretend or you can you see a lot of people when not a lot of people again not a lot of people fake cancer but the people you've seen that have famously faked cancer they shave their eyebrows they shave their head they pluck their eyelashes to give that visual appearance blindness is something that's incredibly difficult to fake because you don't just get to like wave a stick around there are certain things that your brain as a sighted person just does when you see it, you just react to it. When you see a ball flying to your head, you get out of the way. When I have a ball flying to my head, I get hit in the head. You can't actually make yourself do that. You, you'd have to be very powerful, like you can't control your brain that much. And we like to think we can control our brain, but really our brain is what controls us. And so as a blind person, to, to be able to fake not doing things, like hurting yourself, falling, tripping, walking into things, not waving as a response, not smiling as a response to somebody smiling at you, not making eye contact. These are things that the average person just does as instinct because their body's reacting. So of all disability or illness to fake, blindness would actually be particularly difficult. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, yeah, and then I remember we had a conversation because you are very good with eye contact. When, when I met you in person, um, you, you did make eye contact and um, that you, you let me know that that's one of the things why people, that, that people like to call out to say that you're faking being blind because of. So yeah, I, it, it, to be honest, like it weirds me out too because I don't necessarily know that I'm doing it all the time. Yeah. Like sometimes I'm looking at something or quote making eye contact, but I don't I don't realize I'm doing it. So it's like weird for me because it seems like a two sided experience, but it's actually very one sided. Mm -hmm. You're the only one kind of really engaged in that experience. 
And I remember talking to my vision itinerant. So when you're blind, you get a special teacher uh, called a vision itinerant. They're the ones that teach you how to read and write in braille and all these different things. And I remember talking to her about it when I was about 16 or 17. And she said, you know, what people need to realize, you know, what people need to really look for and understand is um, there's looking at something and there's looking through something, right? And like when you're looking at something, it's a very focused thing. But when you're looking kind of through something, it's a little softer. And so even though I'm like maybe looking at you or even close to your eyes, I'm, I'm really kind of more looking through you uh, than really actually connecting. Um, and so for me, I really just base it off of a combination of somebody's height and the sound of their voice. Because I could see for a long time, looking in the, the direction of somebody is natural to me. I actually still look at my phone when I text. When somebody walks in a door, I turn to see who walked in. I can't see any of this stuff. It's just like I saw for so long, it's instinct. It's just my reaction. Like I said, there's things you just don't choose. You don't control, your brain just does it. And so for me, I, I always look at somebody, but I base where I think their eyes probably are based on the sound of their voice and then the sound of how tall they are. And it's a pretty even space between there as to where the eyes are gonna be.